Good afternoon. Good afternoon, internet. My name is Mark and welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me already, I am a senior at NYU studying computer science and linguistics with a minor in game design. And this summer, I'm trying to see just how much Japanese I can learn with the underlying hypothesis of I know something about linguistics, so maybe that will give me a bit of a head start, a bit of an advantage. This learning log is the second in the series, so if you're curious about what all this is about, I kind of introduce everything in this, I never get the corner right, but this video here, it's the top right corner, you'll see a thing, a suggestion pop up for it. Anyway, today I'm going to be talking about how I chose my resources for learning Japanese, thinking about linguistics, and from my past experience with various different experiments with languages on myself. Anyway, let's start it off with what resources you should look out for and pick when you kick off your language learning journey, and what kind of resources you should have on hand to keep your learning consistent and varied. First things first, when you're starting a language, there are a few different places you can start. In my opinion, my slightly educated opinion, that depends on how different the language is from your native language. So really quick, when I say native language, that is the main mother tongue that you grew up speaking and are fluent in. And when I say target language, that's the language you are trying to learn. Anyway, when I started with Russian, I immediately jumped into Rosetta Stone and my difficulty immediately became, I don't know how to read any of these characters and I didn't feel like I was getting enough out of it. So I went ahead and picked up Russian for dummies and within a week I could read Cyrillic pretty much. So the start to Russian for me was learning how to read Cyrillic characters so that I could actually read what was given to me. I'm a very visual person, so being able to read things was very helpful. I took that to heart, so with Japanese, the first thing I've been working through is a writing book to learn hiragana and katakana characters. By no means am I gonna finish this book and be like, boom, I can read Japanese, but uh, I will get to that a little later. On the other hand, if you're learning something like French coming from English, you don't need to learn a new alphabet, it's all the same characters. However, you would start off by learning different sounds perhaps, because there are nasal characters in French that simply don't exist in English. That being said, pick where you want to start. For Japanese, I picked this writing thing. The next thing I'm gonna do is try and read some stuff on this short stories book, and I've already been making connections of what characters I recognize, what sounds I can remember the best, and so jumping into something like Rosetta Stone or Ling app, I want to stray away from requiring the Latin characters to be on there because I want to be able to read Japanese characters. I had a short script for this, but I'm just going way off track. I, I hope you're enjoying this. The first resource you should keep in mind is something that targets where you want to start. If you're learning to write or read, go here. If you're learning the sounds, go to the IPA chart.com, learn what the sounds sound like, try to distinguish them for a little while. Speaking of those specific things, let's talk about your various sources for language learning from my mini experiences. A lot of this has also been kind of confirmed with the reflow methodology, as I call it. I'll leave a link in the description down below. Logo will be here. Take a look. It's very well thought out and I agree with a lot of what they say. All in all for resources, I made a video that kind of dives into why books can be so useful here. It pretty much says why you shouldn't just use language learning apps, but how they can be useful. So the four things that I would recommend looking into are learning software of some sort, so Rosetta Stone, Ling App, Duolingo, something that will keep you to a streak or something that you don't think feels tedious, gamified Ling App or grammar book. Speaking of, the second thing on the list is a book for grammar rules. Using Ling App, it hasn't once mentioned that Japanese word order is different. Knowing that word order is fundamentally different, however, is makes things much easier to associate. Why is it that the word I, I have just been taught for he reads a Japanese book why is the order he Japanese book reads? That doesn't make any sense. Well, it does when you realize that Japanese is a subject, object, verb language. English is subject, verb, object. Again, talk about that more in the app video. The third thing is TV shows, podcasts, and music. We cannot learn just like children's do, but exposure is super important, or so I believe. I've been watching TV shows in Japanese. Reality TV show is hard to watch because I fundamentally don't like it, but I'm learning quite a bit. And lastly is some sort of specific journal for your target language or identifying some way you can record yourself speaking, which I'll talk about in just a minute. Now, these four things derive from how I like to break up language learning, and that is writing, reading, listening, and speaking. Learning to read is key because everything is founded upon reading. Myself, as a visual person, if I'm hearing people speak, there is sometimes reading their words. I will visualize their words. Some people are the exact opposite, more audio-audical. They learn through hearing. 
I cannot think of the word for the life of me for some reason. So when I spell, I find spelling very easy because I can associate the sounds with the images. Anyway, I think reading is the most fundamental part of learning a language. I was asked a question once, if I could teach anyone anything, what would it be? My first answer was reading, my second answer was programming. Now, reading is super important because it opens everything else up. Now, it can come in any order you want, but for this uh, Japanese writing book, for example, it'll show a single character, the sound associated with it, and then for me, I just say that sound whenever I copy it over. And so here are a bunch of... Still focusing on me! <laughs> These are a bunch of characters and I would just sound them out as I write. And I think that is super important. That's how I learned to read as a young child. So reading and writing go hand in hand. And I think that writing comes on top of reading, so to speak. Because if you can think of a word, onagimas, which is, I believe, to throw, then if I know the sounds and what they are associated with, those characters that I would usually read, then I can write that. And to me, that's the natural order. Some people might be reversed. And if you are, I'm definitely curious. So do leave a comment down below. Visual learning and kinesthetic learning and whatever the sound one is, I'm very curious how that changes language learning. That being said, the next thing that's natural for me is listening. So when I listen, and I've learned various sounds like ta or su or tsu. It's like, okay, hey, I recognize that sound. Watashi wa. Oh, hey, wait a minute. I recognize that sound. I can tie it to a character. For me, all the sounds and whatever, they all tie to the visual form of something, right? To a character or uh, a morphine, if you will. And then when you speak, it's all... Again, for me, I will literally visualize what a word looks like before I try to speak it. And so when you're writing and when you're speaking, they build off of reading and listening respectively. That's the most critical part of learning a language, in my opinion, is speaking it, because you need to be able to represent thought. That's one of the places that I think language learning apps fail the most. They give you a sentence and you translate it. You never get an opportunity to learn how you think. That's a more philosophical question about language production and acquisition. All in all, I think that's uh, one of the good features about an app called LingApp. By the way, LingApp has offered to give some free trials to some viewers throughout this learning log series over the summer. They have this cool chatbot feature, which I will slide up over here. It allows you to pick your responses. And I really like this because when they send a message, you get to kind of say, okay, how would I respond, right? If someone says, I'm gonna use French because I know French, bonjour. There's a few different ways you can answer. You can say, bienvenue, welcome, depending on the context. Bonjour, also hello. You can say, salut, could also be hello. Uh, ça va, immediately jump into, how are you? And it gives you this opportunity. Now there are still options below, so you can just tap, tap, tap and go through. But if you don't consciously learn you're not gonna learn anything at all. So it gives you that flexible freedom. Anyway, that being said, leave a comment down below on what language you might be wanting to learn over the summer. Give some feedback on what you'd like to see in a learning log, perhaps, and just general questions you might have about language learning that I maybe will be able to answer. I'd love to hear it, and you could have a chance at getting a free trial at LingApp. No credit card or anything required. Give me your account name. I give them your account name. You get a free trial. If you want to know more about my opinion on how you can get the most out of language learning apps, again, we have that video. This segment was supposed to be five minutes. Anyway, all that being said, the split of resources is key for uh, varying your practice. What did I say? Right, because doing the same thing over and over gets tedious. Duolingo and Ling app can be fun, right? Because they're gamified versions of the app, but just five minutes a day will not get you anywhere. It's pretty boring to go through Russian for dummies and read through the grammar rules and all the cases or, you know, write the same Japanese character over and over again. But it's necessary. Everything is hard work. If learning a language was easy, every single person would be doing it, right? It's difficult. So you have to find a balance between the more fun moments, watching TV, Duolingo, Ling app, whatever it might be, and the harder moments, repeatedly writing a character over and over, doing some grammar study. Find these tools for yourself to work from. Here are those four categories that I recommended, and you'll have a wide array of things to pick from. Just don't do too much. Anyway, this was much longer and much more arduous than I wrote it out on the script to be, but that's probably the format of these language logs from here on out. Let's jump to me to tomorrow and see what exactly my progress has been on the writing book, Ling app, and TV shows. All right, future Mark speaking. Everything is a mess because I'm moving in two days, huzzah. Um, and thus, this will just be the camera mic, but I am here with an update that passed me just segued into, so I gotta make this quick. So, in terms of writing, which I mentioned, um, this is the main resource that I'm going through, learning Japanese. I've only finished the first three sections of hiragana, which is way too slow. I'm gonna get to more of that in just a minute. Each chapter kind of starts off with a character, and then I've practiced two lines, and then practice a bunch of words, which is kind of cool. 
My handwriting is so bad in general, and this is even more difficult. Um, the idea is that once I finish the last two hiragana sections, I'll go through and actively try to memorize all the symbols because there are only a few that I've memorized, and those are the ones that have had a mental link made with them. And then I look at this first Japanese short story uh, after every section, and I look through and I see, hey, I recognize some of these symbols. As a brief example, um, I recognize this, I recognize this, and I recognize a few different characters this is one I just learned today. The sound, um, you know, phonetics is gonna be a whole learning log and that's gonna be a whole thing. But anyway, that's been the main thing. My Lingam streak has sucked. I've done like two or three days, like every two or three days. Been listening to music and I've been watching TV shows. I was trying to watch a reality TV show called Terrace House. Reality TV show, I'm not a big fan in general. The review that I have sort of written down. It's been slow and I want to make significant progress. So when I move, I'm trying to get this all done really like today and tomorrow so that I can just schedule this to upload. So the things I want to make significant progress on and the goals for the next two weeks. Uh, so first is finishing this writing book. Uh, at the very least is finishing the whole hiragana section and then either doing some active memorization or doing the katakana section, but I might pause. But all in all, you should see me being done with the hiragana section next week and what I've gotten from that, what I've done for actively learning. Alongside that, I wanna be able to read the first short story in here. There are little English translations um, with each one and it uses kanji. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna do that. Cause the difficulty with this, so this is the first short story. The weird thing with this, right, is that we have Ayako rides trains every day. But the problem is, so trains is bold. I assume trains is bold here, but the word order is different. So I don't, I wish there was a gloss, which is like, I'll throw up an example on screen, but you have the, the foreign language. Then you have what it, well, guess word for word translates to with cases and stuff. And then you have the English translation or at least your native language translation. I really wish, that the book had these, but it doesn't. Uh, I also wish Ling App has it, but it doesn't. Anyway, that, speaking of Ling App, goal number three. So finishing the writing book, being able to read one short story, or you know, being able to navigate that word order because there are morphemes that are there, but aren't in the English thing. So goal number three is a consistent Ling App streak. So 14, 15 days streak and a deeper understanding of Japanese grammar. I want to go through, no, I will go through some Japanese syntax trees and look, uh, study up on the grammar. So when I say watashi wa, like where is each morpheme coming from? Um, if I'm saying the boy, the guy is reading a book, what is each part? What are the, like, I, you know, I can match the vocab words with the vocab words, but all of a sudden there's an extra wa there. Is that a tense marker? Is that a case marker? What's going on there? I have no idea. Anyway, those are my goals for learning log number three, uh, which will be about vocabulary acquisition, by the way. So if you're curious about what I think to be most effective ways of learning vocab. Stay tuned. I didn't do great these last two weeks, fully acknowledging that it's a very difficult language, but if, if, if it was easy, everyone would learn Japanese. All I have to do is do better than I did this week. And that means a better streak, which is a low bar already, a few more chapters of this writing book, and just more progress in general. With every learning log, I just want to have done a little bit more than last time. I've stated my goals. Make sure to drop your goals down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. I, in the next learning log, I will be in a different location, which is very exciting. How have you been working on things? If you want to give Ling up a try, let me know. I can, I'm thinking one or two trials per learning log. So leave a comment down below, make it detailed, however you want. I think earlier in the video, I mentioned some details about what you could write, but yeah, what are your goals for next week? How might you incorporate an app like Ling app into that? Anyway, without further rambling, thanks so much for watching. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome. See you in two weeks.